I'm headed to Miami, Florida to help a homeowner out who wrote in about comfort problems. They've noticed hot spots and cold spots in their house and they can't seem to get the comfort right. Anytime I hear about that, I'm thinking about pinpointing where the issue is. Is it within the ductwork? Is it within the building enclosure? Is it with the AC unit? And so that can take a full day of testing. To get jump started on that, what I've asked them to do is send me their floor plans. With that information, I can run a heating and cooling load calculation and we can get started with the analysis. Hey, USB Corey. Yes, sir. How you doing, Ross? Nice to meet you. Likewise. Welcome to my home. Come on in. Yeah, glad to be in Miami. I'm moving a little bit slower these days. I got a boot on, but um, but glad to be here and hopefully we can solve your problems. You wrote in about hot spots and cold spots. Yeah, I wrote in because at night when I'm trying to sleep in the primary bedroom, the temperature is like six to seven degrees warmer than the rest of the house. Wow. All right. So you're cranking down the temperature, <laughs> trying to get it arctic cold in one area to make it comfortable in another area. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Well, can we take a look at it? Okay. Perfect. It's cool. this way. All right. Beautiful house. Thank you. So this is the bedroom? Yes. All right. So tell me a little bit about it. Is it always hot, always cold? Because I can feel the temperature difference right now. Yeah. It's always warmer in here than it is in any other part of the house. Okay. Do you notice a difference between winter and summer or daytime to nighttime? Uh, I notice it more at night because that's typically when I close the door to go to sleep. Got it. Okay. And then do you have you had any companies take a look at it and did they make any recommendations? Yeah, we had one company come out and they suggested that we install the jump vent. Then that improved it minimally. It helped decrease the temperature by maybe a degree or two, but there's still like a six degree difference between here and other parts of the house. Got it. And the one thing about a jump duct is it's usually there to provide a return air path from the bedroom back to the main living space where the central return is. So that's usually a step in the right direction, but in your case, obviously didn't solve it. Right. Got it. Anything else? Uh, yeah. right? We also got these remote thermostats. Okay. So what this does is I can set the temperature to this room and I can make it to where it's comfortable, but it makes other parts of the house arctic cold. Yeah. So that becomes the sensing point. So the system's driving this AC system to make that nice and comfortable, but it's going to make it really cold in other parts, as you said. Right. So, yeah. You know, so the first thing I would recommend was a manual J, which is a load calculation. And to do that, I would take measurements of all the widths, the lengths and the heights of all the rooms, okay. measuring the windows, the wall insulation, the roof insulation. So getting an understanding of the thermal envelope of your house. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, you sent me the floor plans and some information about your house. So I already got a head start on that. Um, that's going to tell us how much air we need to move into this room to actually keep you comfortable. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is a home performance assessment. And what I mean by that is I'm going to do some tests on the enclosure and on the duct system to make sure their HVC system is actually performing properly and the fact that it's matched up with the load of the building. Okay. All right. So I'm going to meet a local contractor who's going to be pulling up right about now. So I'm going to go meet Jenry and he's going to give us a hand. All right. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Jenry, good to see you. What's going on, guys? Be Corey, Corey Jenry. How you doing? Nice, nice to meet you, sir. Likewise. So we need to see the air in there. Where's that at? All right, right here in the garage. I'll show you. All right, let's do it. All right, Ross is up ahead on your left. Yeah, yeah, I see it there. Okay. Let me take a uh, picture of the rating plate. Grab that while we're here. Okay, so Jenry and I are going to go take a walk through of the exterior, take a look at the condensing unit, and then we'll check back in with you in a little bit after we do some tests. All right, perfect. Sound good? Yeah. All right, cool. All right. When I'm doing an exterior walkthrough, I'm paying close attention to the HVC equipment, the terminations, the roof venting, like soffit vents, to gain a better understanding of the home's layout and systems. And now we're gonna head inside to get the blower door set up. The blower door test will measure the home's air leakage rate. For the blower door test, we need to open all interior doors, close all exterior doors and windows, and ensure all exhaust fans, HVC systems and combustion devices are off. Once set up, we can turn on the fan and depressurize the home in order to measure the air leakage. Set CFM 50 number came in at about 1700, not great. Yep. So we're gonna do another test. For that, I actually close all the interior doors and I turn the HVAC on. With just the HVC system running, the house is depressurizing to negative 0.9. This means that outdoor air is being pulled into the living space. Typically, this is indicative of supply duct leakage. We will run some additional tests to confirm. We like to see less than three pascals, so this is good. It means we typically do not have a return air pathway problem. So Jenry is now going to use a flow hood to measure the airflow coming out of the supplier vent, and we're going to measure it with the bedroom door open and with the bedroom door closed. With the bedroom door open, 
Less than six. Less than six, okay. Let's do the same test with the bedroom door closed. Yep. Bedroom door close. Yeah, 61.5. We got a difference there. All right, we're gonna do the same test in the bathroom, measuring the flow through the exhaust fan register. All right, we're here at the air handler. It is a three ton air handler. It's an upflow unit, and we're gonna test the static pressure on the unit and the airflow. Nice. I'm gonna be using a digital manometer. As you can see, we're in the yellow range. We aren't moving as much air as we'd like. There's definitely room for improvement. Now that we've confirmed that we have duct leakage, I'm introducing theatrical smoke to the duct system to help us pinpoint the leaks. All right, Corey, we've finished all the tests. I've got some good news and maybe not so great news. Okay. So for the great news, we've got a proper size HVC system. So we have a three ton air handler and condenser that is the right size for this size building and this load. We also confirmed that the unit itself has plenty of life left. It's eight years old, and we should get 15 to 20 years life out of that unit, okay? For the not so great news, we confirmed that we're not moving enough airflow to the bedroom, all right? So the bedroom's only getting about 135 CFM with the door closed. We really need to be about 170. So we compare the, what we measured to the load calculation, and we're short. And that is exactly why you're having the temperature issues that you are experiencing, right? right? We also confirm that we have some duct leakage. So we have some duct leakage in the garage and some in the attic, about 20% duct leakage overall. So meaning that 80% of the air that you're paying to condition is making you back to the house, 20% is being lost to the attic and to the garage. So of course, there's some energy improvements there by making that change. So what do you suggest we do to fix this? So there's a couple of different options and it really all depends on budget. The first thing I would start with was, is the return side of the equation. So the air handler is easy and accessible, and by sealing up the return, putting in a proper size filter and a proper size return air grill, by doing that, we're gonna, we're gonna drop the static pressure, we're gonna move more airflow through that system, and it's really easy and accessible to get at because it's right there in the garage. Okay. The next step would be to tackle the supply side of the equation, and that's looking at the ductwork in the attic to put in the right size ductwork that's properly sealed so we can move the right amount of air to every room. And the third thing would be to put the HVC unit inside the conditioned space. And by doing that, typically in this type of arrangement, I'd recommend that we build a closet effectively around the HVC unit, insulating that and air sealing it. Therefore, the HVC unit becomes now part of the house and not part of the garage. And that's gonna reduce the amount of condensation and the energy performance uh, that, it's, that it's seeing right now. Got it. What do you think? Yeah, sounds good. Sounds like we have a lot to do. Alrighty, we'll keep you posted. If you have any questions, I'm here to help. Hey, will do, Ross, thank you. Thanks, Corey, take care. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.